It's This Week in Bourbon, and we've got liftoff into bourbon news. And here's your headlines for May 27th, 2022. Spotify accidentally advertises Wild Turkey on every channel in a bad way. Jim Beam launches its new line extension, Hardens Creek, and Dixon Deadman announces his highly anticipated next creation, Two Times Oak. But before we get started, here's a quick word from our partners. Do you ever pour yourself a bourbon, swirl it around, and then start struggling to come up with tasting notes? And perhaps you're also looking for a good Father's Day gift idea. Well, you can now solve both with a kit from Nose Your Bourbon. And unlike other nosing kits on the market, Nose Your Bourbon kits feature real ingredients for the most authentic aromas. You can smell real Tahitian vanilla bean instead of some synthetic aroma that's just made from chemicals. So head on over to noseyourbourbon.com and enter code BP10 for 10% off your order. Ed Bly and Rising Tide Spirits are back again with a new release of Old Stubborn Bourbon. And this release of Old Stubborn is a premium hand marriage of 10, 11, and 12-year cask drink, barely filtered pot still bourbon. It comes in at a staggering 123.8 proof. And the flavoring grain for this one, which the last one was weeded, but this time it's now rye. Rich, sweet, and bold with a long finish that's sure to be another eye-opener. You can order online at Sealbox or TheBourbonConcierge.com, and you can even purchase in person at Revival Vintage Spirits, and even now with very few select stores in Kentucky. You can get it now while you can, but be sure to do it because it's not going to last long. From their bar to yours, Chad and Sarah of the popular YouTube channel It's Bourbon Night bring you their favorite at-home old-fashioned mix with the new Elemental Elixir's Golden Hour Syrup. It's a custom-made syrup with notes of bold black tea, warm spices, and orange zest. All you need is your favorite whiskey and ice. No bitters needed. One bottle makes 16 drinks, so that's only $1 a cocktail before you add your own whiskey. They can also be enjoyed in other cocktails or spirits, mocktails, coffee, tea, and anything you can think of. It's crafted locally in Lexington, Kentucky, and you can get your bottle now at whiskeyambitions.com. Always find what you love at Total Wine & More. With so many great bottles to choose from at the lowest price, it's easy to find your favorite Cabernet or a new single-barrel bourbon to try with some help from one of their friendly guides. And with every bottle comes the confidence of knowing you just found something amazing. With the lowest prices for over 30 years, find what you love and love what you find only at Total Wine & More. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly and be 21. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Bourbon. Just Kenny here this week because Ryan is doing his thing on 30A. If you've been paying any attention to our Instagram channel this past week, you know, every once in a while he kind of gets this, this hankering and this motivation to start being a, a social media light once again. And it just seems to be when he's on vacation in Florida. So if you happen to be on 30A, you can always stop by and say hi to him. He's been there all week and kind of given his lowdown of the bourbon scene there in Florida. So unfortunately, you've got yet another week of just bourbon news with me and maybe some of my terrible takes and jokes, but let's go ahead and let's get into it. It seems as though Spotify has accidentally listed Wild Turkey as a sponsor on every podcast on Spotify, the ad in which some platforms included an order now button for the liquor. To make matters even worse, it also appears that it's coming on sobriety podcasts as well, specifically on a sobriety from alcohol podcast such as Sobercast. A Spotify spokesperson told Pod News that on Saturday, Spotify made a technical error that caused ads featuring the Wild Turkey brand to be incorrectly placed on a number of podcasts. We've identified the cause and swiftly resolved this matter. They contacted Wild Turkey's owners, Campari, with the message. And on Sunday, May 22nd, they were then notified of an issue where Spotify's advertising team that caused Wild Turkey ads to be published incorrectly to multiple podcasts on the platform, including those where an ad for alcohol brand would actually be inappropriate. Spotify has taken responsibility for the incident and removed the incorrect ad placements and is investigating the root cause. Wild Turkey and their parent Campari Group adhere to strict advertising guidelines for their products, and this campaign was designed within those guidelines. They had a statement that said that they are disappointed with the implementation of the campaign by Spotify, and it was inconsistent with their advertising code, and they have paused all media with Spotify pending the results of the investigation. 
They are members and partners of Discus and Responsibility.org and unequivocally support a responsible marketing agenda. Well, I can tell you right now, Campari or Wild Turkey, if you're listening, you can go ahead and you can give us any kind of thing that you were thinking about with Spotify. We will be more than happy to advertise on this podcast. And we are hitting your target demographic every single week. You don't have to worry about anything with us. I don't know why you wouldn't just go ahead and think of that. But hey, you know, it's one of those things that you've got to kind of spread the wealth a little bit, try and get, you know, the people that are in the, I guess you can say that just the, just outside the bounds of your, your typical consumer, because everybody that's listening to this probably owns some bottle of wild turkey. And so they want to try to find who's that next consumer. And you've got to kind of, kind of find a drive those, those kind of things home. But uh, unfortunately, like I said, uh, didn't work out in this favor for you this time. Uh, that's just a glitch in, you know, Spotify's thing, unfortunately. But hey, I tell you what, the door is always open. Go ahead, call my cell phone, send me a message. We'll work something out. Be happy to do it for you. Jim Beam has announced the global launch of the Welcome Sessions. It's a 360 degree music campaign designed to connect fans and celebrate the unrivaled power of live music and creating strong communities. The program will be brought to life throughout the summer featuring live events, an exclusive content series, and a first-ever Welcome Sessions live concert at Jim Beam's Kentucky Distillery. As a part of Jim's Beam mission to inspire the sense of belonging in others, the brand will be spotlighting the reunion of fan communities and their favorite artists. And that's told through a lens of a headline partnership with internationally renowned rock band Muse. The Jim Beam Welcome Sessions campaign kicked off last month with a uniquely intimate Muse hometown concert at the Cavern Club in Exeter, England. And that's hosting the band's loyal community of fans and friends. Jim Beam's program launched in select global regions last year with the release of a digital series featuring artist partners Jack Garrett, Fontaine's DC, Jose Gonzalez, and Wolf Alice performing at their first stages. So I don't know the date of when they will be at Jim's Bean Kentucky Distillery, but if that sounds like something, if you know who the rock band Muse is, I probably should. I'm sorry, I don't. That's not my, it's not my jam, get it? But if it is your, your kind of thing, I guess go ahead and check it out. Do a little Google foo and maybe you'll figure out exactly when Muse will be at Jim Beam and you can kind of get a part of that welcome session and that whole entire 360 degree music campaign they're trying to offer here. And so this one is for those people in, well, actually where Ryan's at right now, in Florida, because dozens of Florida distilleries will soon become stops on a new tour across the Sunshine State. And this is featuring members of the Florida Craft Spirits Association with open doors to whiskey enthusiasts from around the world. The Florida Distillery Trail will consist of 39 distilleries spanning from the Panhandle to the southernmost part of the state. Along the trail, visitors will get a chance to experience the varied landscapes, landmarks, and the blend of culture that makes up Florida. To embark on the trail, explorers can get a free passport booklet at any participating distillery location. Along the trail, those on the tour will collect stamps in the special booklet at each stop on the route. The trail can be completed distillery by distillery or in regions at a time. And for more information or to get on the trail... Go check it out at floridacraftspirits.org. So for anybody that's out there and you think that you want to spend yet another Disney vacation in Florida, well, you can go ahead and drop your family off in Orlando and figure out where your next stop is going to be on this trail. I'm actually kind of wondering how many stops Blake has actually made. With 39 distilleries on here, I'm going to guess that he's done at least 10 to 15. Just a guess, but I'll have to dive in and figure that one out a little bit later. But that's all of the bourbon news. We're going to be right back in a minute with some more bourbon release news. Stay tuned. If you're anything like me, then you can't get enough about bourbon. And that's why I'm a subscriber to Bourbon Plus magazine. Bourbon Plus is a quarterly publication that tells the stories from the heart of bourbon. The farmers who grow the grain, the distillers who labor over the process, and the people like you and me who raise their glasses to celebrate it all. Subscribe to Bourbon Plus Magazine today at bourbonplus.com, that's P-L-U-S dot com, and use code PURSUIT at checkout for $5 off your subscription. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point-of-sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify's point-of-sale is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. And with Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. 
Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. And get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's point of sale Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award winning 24 7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash bourbon, all lowercase, and go to shopify.com slash bourbon to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash bourbon. And here we are talking once again of bourbon release news. Now I can tell you that this one is going to be a little bit longer than the bourbon news. It was a little light on bourbon news this week. I don't know what happened, but maybe it's uh, it's just the getting to get the dog days of summer getting started. I don't know about you all. My kid just had their last day of school this week. So things are going to start getting weird around here with kids running around. There's no school. We got to figure out how we get them in camps and daycare and how do we just keep them entertained for, for the rest of the summer? And I've got to figure out how to keep cranking out these podcasts for y'all to listen to, but let's go ahead and let's get into it. So for our, I should say, one of the headlines that we had is that Jim Beam is launching a new line extension called Hardin's Creek. So here's a little bit of the backstory here. In 1795, Jacob Beam set down roots in the foothills of Western Kentucky. He started with what was described as a sturdy but humble well to draw water from a nearby creek. That water powered a mill, the mill to grind fields of corn, which formed Jacob's Beam's earliest mashes. And that creek, well, you can probably guess it, it was called Hardin's Creek. And that became the first source of his family's enduring legacy. It is envisioned that this is considered an ongoing series of annual releases, featuring some of the James B. Beam Distilling Company's rarest and most unique liquids. It aims to show the breadth and the depth of Beam's whiskey-making credentials inclusive of age, blending, mash bill, distillation, barrels, rack house locations, and more. The first initial releases are called Jacob's Well Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, which is a thoughtful blend of two ultra-aged bourbons, and the Colonel James B. Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, which is called a craftily, sorry, a carefully crafted young whiskey. And these come in the recent wake of the opening of the new Fred B. No Distillery on the Beam Campus in Kentucky and the appointment of Freddie No as the eighth generation Beam Master Distiller. So here's a little bit more information for these particular two releases. The Jacob's Well Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey is a blend of two ultra-aged expressions. One is a 16-year-old traditional bourbon and one 15-year-old high rye bourbon. I don't know what you consider traditional versus high rye. I'm guessing if it's over 21%, 36%, maybe that's considered high rye. Actually, kind of think about it. Usually around like 12% is, is considered probably around traditional. So maybe you think over there. Anyway, this is coming in at a hundred and eight percent or sorry, 108 percent, 108 proof, 108 percent be a lot. The retail price for this one is going to be a hundred and fifty dollars. The other one is the Colonel James B. Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon. This is a two-year-old whiskey that achieves a depth of flavor usually reserved for more mature bourbons by taking it off the still at a lower distillation proof imparting more flavor from the fermentation process and letting the barrel's characteristics shine through at a younger age. Same exact proof, 108. However, this one has a retail price of $80. So I'll talk about the whiskey here in a second. The, the one thing that I, I, I do admire about this, and I'm sure that they were doing this well before Heaven Hill launched their uh, Heritage Series, because that's the one that Heaven Hill came out with. They have that 17-year and it comes in this ornate box. It tells you exactly the mash bill, tells the warehouses, it tells the story about behind these barrels. It's being more transparent because they are really looking at the whiskey geek and that whiskey consumer about how can they create these kind of ultra rare and really crafted expressions. Now, you see them taking a, a page out of Heaven Hill's book only because Heaven Hill kind of beat them to the punch with this, but Jim Beam's kind of doing the same exact thing. They're gonna start putting out more information about you know, where these were located, what's the mash bill, the distillation, the rack house locations, and all, all that sort of stuff. So that first one, Jacob's Well, that definitely plays into what you would think that Heaven Hill is going to do. They're finding the, the deepest stocks that they have, 16 and 15 year old, and blending them to create something that you can put out there. And at 16 and 15, I am sure it's going to be fantastic. Now, the only thing that kind of probably 
irks you maybe just a little bit is that, remember just a few years ago, you could go and get Knob Creek store picks for $45 and a lot of them were 15 year. Well, that's the, that's the unfortunate reality. Now you got to tack an extra hundred dollars onto it and you're kind of still getting maybe not the same exact thing as a blend a little bit, but you know, that's, that's the, that's the unfortunate, uh, you know, kind of situation that we're in. Now, the other one here, Colonel James B. Beam, this one's an interesting one. So they're selling a two-year-old whiskey. I, I didn't think I'd, I would see this. A two-year-old whiskey from Jim Beam selling for $80. You would think you'd see this out of a craft distillery that needs to make some money back. I haven't, I have these bottles. I haven't had a chance to try them yet. We were going to, we are going to save them for a whiskey quickie, but that is something as a, as a whiskey consumer that you look at and you think, wow, that's, that's tough. That's a tough one to kind of bite off and chew there because I mean, gosh, do you remember just a few years ago when Peerless came out with a three-year rye for 80 to a hundred dollars and they got slammed. I mean, they got ridiculed by a lot of people in Facebook groups and forums because they thought, why would anybody pay $80 for, or even $100 for a three-year-old product? And now Beam, a heritage distillery, is coming out with a two-year-old for 80 I don't know. I guess we'll have to see what the, you know, what it tastes like. Does it actually stand up? Is it deserving of $80? We'll see what that that is. I do think it has a, an interesting take to it. And part of this, and exactly, I should probably think that the reason why they are coming with this particular price point, this particular product, is because if you think how long the Fred B. No Distillery has been up and running, that's probably been a little bit over two years. So I would guess that this is some of the the, the first distillate or some of the first runs that were done from the Fred B. No Distillery, where that is where they are now doing... Uh, you know, Knob Creek and some of the other small batch um, type of premium products. And so they can do a lot more experimentation here. And the idea behind the Fred B. No distillery, not the James B. Beam, the ultra big, huge thing was because you can't sit there and do a, a run of say 50 barrels of an experiment it at James B. Beam or at, inside of Boston. It's just, it's too big. And when I say Boston, Boston, Kentucky, it's just too big. You'll have to do a couple hundred barrels, if not more than that. Maybe when I say a couple hundred, I'm talking like 700 or something like that. And that's a lot for one experiment. So this allows them to do a, a little bit more of that. So we'll see exactly what this tastes like. Uh, stay tuned for more Whiskey Quickies. And we'll let you know. All right, well, let's keep going here. So Barrel Craft Spirits will reintroduce the BCS Gold Label Seagrass. It's available now at BarrelBourbon.com, but the BCS Gold Label Seagrass features the ultra-rare 20-year rye whiskey. It's meticulously sourced and finished in Martinique rum, Malmsey Madeira, and apricot brandy casks. The expression was distilled in Canada and then crafted and bottled in Kentucky at cask strength, which is 128.12 proof. And beginning in mid-June, the BCS Gold Label Seagrass will be available at select retailers and online via their website at BarrelBourbon.com has a suggested retail price of $500. Well, I guess it sold out the first time and might as well just go ahead and keep cranking out. If you've got some 20 year rye whiskey hanging around and everybody loves seagrass, I'll tell you what, Fred has got the, the magic touch when it comes to selling out seagrass across the nation. So I'm glad people were able to try it. I think it's a, it's a great expression. It's a lot different than if you've tried any other kind of uh, just straight bourbons and stuff like that with the, uh, the different types of finishes in it with rum, Madeira, and apricot brandy, you're going to get plenty of different flavors out of it. And personally, I'm a huge fan of the apricot brandy cask. I've had multiple types of whiskeys that have been finished in that. Even had a barrel 18-year Kentucky whiskey that we did a selection of that was finished in an apricot brandy cask, and it was phenomenal. It kind of tasted like nerds. And I know that people are digging seagrass, so if you want to try something that's ultra rare, 20 years, and, you know, you've got a, a nice little credit card with some cushions sitting around, go ahead, plop down the $500. It's just money. You make more every single day. So Balcones Distilling announced today the release of Big Baby 2022. It's a five-year-old bottled and bond straight corn whiskey that will shepherd in the next generation of the distillery's corn whiskeys. It's matured and used tequila casks from Mexico. And Big Baby 2022 is the distillery's first foray into bottled and bond whiskey which requires that the whiskey is a product of a single distiller in a single season aged for a minimum of four years and is federally and in a federally bonded warehouse and bottled at 50% alcohol by volume. 
Big Baby 2022 joins Balcones Distilling's lineup of famed corn whiskeys, including Baby Blue, Brimstone, True Blue Cash Strength, and True Blue 100, which are made from roasted blue corn and are milled, mashed, fermented, distilled, and matured in used oak in Waco, Texas. Since the inception of its initial corn whiskeys, Balcones has moved its ingredients even closer to home with a hybridization of heirloom blue, blue corn grown right in the heart of Texas. Big Baby 2022 retails for $60 and will be available across select states, including Texas, California, Arizona, Florida, Illinois, and New Jersey. So if you're a big fan of Balcones Distilling, which we've done, I think, two picks from them now. I'm a big fan of, of what they're doing. They have some crazy one-off flavors. Definitely go and check it out. I, like I said, they've got things that they've got, in my personal opinion, they've got some, you know, some, some really great ones. They have some ones that just didn't hit the mark for me, but that is, that's kind of what you get with, uh, you know, different types of distilleries, especially one when you're trying to do sort of different heirloom grain and corn and stuff like that. Usually it's just straight yellow corn, but when you start messing with bloody butcher corn and now uh, blue corn, you're going to get a lot of different flavors that are out of it. And plus that Texas cooling and <laughs> cooling climate heating and just kind of conditioning is definitely going to pay a, a big toll on the whiskey as well. Millam and Green Whiskey is introducing its second release of the Castle Hill Series Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is a limited edition, 13-year-old hand-selected straight bourbon whiskey bottled at barrel proof. The Castle Hill Series celebrates the art of batching well-aged casks, one of the many methods that Millam and Green enlist to create its award-winning range of whiskeys. Just 26 vintage barrels were used to create this superb whiskey, is what it says. This series is named for the historic Texas Military Institute, also known as the Castle in Austin, Texas. While the Milliman Green Distillery Operations and Warehousing are in Blanco, Texas, the castle is home to Heather Green's Blending Lab, and its old-world elegance serves as an inspiration for the Milliman Green CEO and Master Blender. Under Green's direction, whiskey blending is essential to creating more Milliman Green whiskeys. It's bottled at cash drink, which is 111 proof. It'll be available in 14 states and Alberta, Canada, and only 3,000 bottles will be available at $150 a piece. Well, if Mrs. Green here requires a castle to do her blending, I don't know what Ryan's going to ask of me when we actually start growing this thing a little bit more. I don't think a castle is going to be in our in our books, but we will have a warehouse. We will We will get a warehouse and maybe we'll get a really nice chair probably like a, a Herman Miller chair, something like that. You know, I mean, they're really good for your lower back. So uh, I'm sure that anybody out there is listening and you have a Herman Miller at your office and you, you just, you don't have any back problems. You're able to just be rested throughout the day. And that's what we need for our, our golden child over here as he starts blending away at our, at our future here. So let's go getting a, a Herman Miller fun together for Ryan. We'll make it happen. So Cedar Ridge Distillery, they are set to release a commemorative label on its Iowa bourbon and honor the upcoming 4th of July holiday, the 2022 Red, White, and Bourbon Campaign label. This will replace the brand's current version with an American flag-inspired design. The unique label will be available from Memorial Day to Labor Day. In addition to the commemorative label, Cedar Ridge will donate a portion of its sales from 2022 to the Enlisted Association of the National Guard of Iowa's We Care for Iowa Foundation. Cedar Ridge's donations will support the foundation's hardship grants, which helps those with financial hardships related to events such as mobilization, natural disasters, fires, and other catastrophic losses. It has a retail price of $35. Very good way to go, Cedar Ridge. Like to see anything that helps, of course, celebrate America, celebrate bourbon and our national spirit. That's I'm going to call it our national spirit. It is, it is, you know, uniquely American, but I'm even more impressed to be able to see that, you know, we're able to raise money for great causes such as that as well. And as we start talking about America and Labor Day and kind of hanging out in the sun, well, we've got something news that's coming from Sagamore Spirit. And so it's right on time for summer. They're announcing the national launch of its ready to drink canned craft cocktails in three vibrant flavors. You have pineapple rye garita, honey paloma, and lemon tea fizz. These are made with organic juices and naturally gluten-free. Sagamore Spirits Rye Whiskey Can Craft Cocktails are ready to enjoy wherever the day takes you. So here's just a little bit more information on each of these. The Pineapple Rye Garita is Sagamore Spirit Rye Whiskey paired with lime juice, pineapple juice, agave syrup, and natural chipotle flavor. 
at 7% ABV. The Honey Paloma is also rye with red grapefruit juice, lime juice, agave, and natural honey flavor. This comes in at the highest at 9% ABV. And Lemon Tea Fizz is whiskey paired with Meyer lemon juice, green tea, and natural yuzu flavor. And that comes in at 8%. These three cocktails will be sold together in a six-can variety pack as well as single-flavor four-packs. They will be available in all major markets where Sagamore Spirit is sold. For those in Sagamore Spirit's hometown of Maryland and Baltimore there, Sagamore Spirit will also create and release three new canned cocktail recipes this summer. You're going to have Orange Crush, which will also be available in Washington, D.C., Delaware, and New Jersey, and that pays homage to the famed cocktail that originated in Ocean City, Maryland, as well as a ginger and rye and a watermelon sour, both of which will be exclusively available at their Baltimore distillery. The variety canned cocktails will be sold at an SRP of $20 for the variety pack, and the four packs will go at an SRP of $16. And of course, we are good friends with the folks over at Sagamore, and they came into town, gosh, it had to have been two months ago, maybe three months ago, and we went out to dinner with them, and uh, very, you know, very humbled and awesome to be able to go out with them, and Brian Tracy, their their CEO, brings us a, a bag, and we looked at it, and of course, it's it's the these, these cocktails. Um, now, it weren't these exact ones. They had the lemon tea fizz. I believe we had the honey paloma as well. But the pineapple ragarita, we have not tried yet. I think we had it. It was a blackberry smash or blackberry something. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think blackberry was going up in price. So they couldn't do blackberry anymore. It must Now it's considered, I guess, a limited edition. But I will say, and this is not just because we're big fans of them, but this is because we truly believe in their product. And it's really good that these are some of the best canned cocktails that are coming from a whiskey company. And not just somebody that's just making something because they want to get canned cocktails out. Like they're a whiskey company first, and this is something that they're, you know, venturing into that next stage. So if you have a chance, if you see these on the shelves, go ahead, give it a try. 20 bucks for variety pack. Let me know what you think. I, I kind of want to try this pineapple ragarita, even though, I don't know, like sometimes bourbon and margarita doesn't really mix. I'm not a big fan of like bourbon garitas or margar bourbons or whatever you want to call them or something like that. But I'll tell you what, I love my margaritas. And so anything with pineapple on it too, I'll, I'll go ahead and give it a shot. And so Smooth Ambler, they're launching their Founders Cask Strength Bourbon Series. This is the first line extension introduced since the inaugural rye recipe that released last year. The Founders Cast Strength Series was born from founder and whiskey maker John Little, who we've had on the show plenty of times before, and his fiery desire to showcase distilling, maturation, and blending expertise while also tastefully highlighting ingredients mostly from the Appalachian region through this produ- to this whiskey produced at its distillery in West Virginia. It's aged five years, non-chill filtered, and comprised of 71% corn, 21% rye, and 8% malted barley. At this time, only six batches will be produced per year, with less than 900 total cases of product available nationwide. Smooth Ambler's Founders Cask Strength Series bourbon will be available at select liquor stores throughout California, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Maryland, Michigan, North Carolina, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, and Texas, with a total of $55 per bottle. Now, I will say, we recently went to Smooth Ambler. We took a little bit of a trip to West Virginia. We got a great podcast with John Little sitting in the the hopper right now. So you can expect that here in about another month or two. But we also got to try his whiskey, not their MGP whiskey, because we kind of talked about how do you build a brand on Source Bourbon and kind of keep that going. But now they've got some new blood in there. They've got some people that have really refined the process that they've been using to make their whiskey for a very long time. So if you weren't a fan of Big Level and maybe that turned you off, well, it's a completely different whiskey than what Big Level is. And I can guarantee you, we tried it and I I was personally a fan of it. This had this like bubble gum and chalky flavor to it that you really don't get um, with a lot of other places. So big fan of it. Glad, kind of glad to see this happening. And so congratulations to John and the Smooth Ambler team on this new release. So Cave Zamanian, we've also had him on the podcast. And you're going to hear him again here in a few weeks too. Man, it just sounds like this is a, a Pernod Ricard type of podcast right here now all of a sudden. But the founder and whiskey maker of Rabbit Hole presents Navalier, and it's a founder's collection of Kentucky straight bourbon and whiskey finished in French oak. So Navalier marks the fourth expression of the Rabbit Hole Founders Collection and is Rabbit Hole's most provocative release to date. With Navalier, Cave explores the sensory impact of French oak maturation on bourbon, 
calling upon terroir and time-honored winemaking techniques to create an expression of originality and singular taste. The limited edition Kentucky Straight Bourbon was aged for 16 years, 15 years in new charred oak American barrels, and a full year of finishing in new French oak barrels sculpted by the virtuoso artisans of Tonelari Leroy, one of France's most renowned cooperages. Navalier began with a selection of 10 rare Kentucky Straight High Rye Bourbon whiskeys chosen by Cave from the private collection he began curating before he founded Rabbit Hole. Forest of Origin actually played a pivotal role in the choice of the oak that Cave selected for the barrels to be used with finishing. Given that the terroir and the climate of a region affect the density of a wood's grain and the manner in which the wood imparts its oak flavors, he ultimately selected from the Nevers and the Allier forests of central France. You combine that together, what do you get? Navalier. There, the woods of the medium to tight grain and release the region's characteristics of oak flavor slowly while imparting the soft tannic structure that discerning winemakers have long favored. This cask strength offering is 115.8 proof. It'll be available in June at fine retail shops. A total of 1,155 sequentially numbered bottles will be released and has a suggested retail price of $895. So, um, the price might be a little bit shocking to us, but that's okay. I don't think you should be shocked by price too much anymore with bourbon. But this one has a, a you know, it comes with a price tag because when we start looking at, A, you've got 15-year-old bourbon. So if you're sourcing from multiple different places, you must have just been holding on to them for quite a long time. They've just been sitting around and you've got to figure out what to do with them. Now, 15-year-old bourbon, as we kind of talked about at the very top of the show with Jim Beam, it's, it's a long time to be holding on to something. Now, they're taking this in another direction, uh, finishing it in French oak. Now, we've had a few different French oak bourbons. So we've had the uh, the French oak from uh, the old Charter Oak series, but that's a little bit different because that ages entirely in French oak. It's not finished in French oak. So now we're going into the finishing stages of it. So I'll be interested to see exactly what type of flavor it imparts on the whiskey. I'm sure it'll be, I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be great. I mean, up for $800, $900, you're not going to put out a bad whiskey. But the other thing that is also interesting here is that the French oak barrel also comes from a French cooperage. And I've ended up talking to a, another cooperage from France actually relatively recently because they were interested in trying to uh, give slash sell us some, some barrels to kind of put our own stuff down for pursuit series and pursuit spirits. We didn't take them up on it only because I, I don't want to just go ahead and we don't, we don't have the money to go and, start willy-nilly just plopping down money on the barrels. Now, the other thing to kind of note is that the French barrels, the French oak barrels, they're not like ISC. Um, they're not like a lot of other places in Kentucky or even America where they're cranking out barrels in, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. And when I say 10, 15 minutes, it, it, there is a, there is a, a process that goes through and kind of like a con conveyor belt that you kind of see it as the, as, as it is built. But the, the thing that is interesting here is that when it comes down to price, usually a French oak barrel from France is going to be about 8 to 12x the cost of an American barrel. And when we talk about that, and when I was talking to looking at getting some of these French barrels for ourselves, and I saw the price, I go, holy crap, I mean, that's what we pay for a full barrel. After the barrel's been made, filled, and put in the warehouse, that's our final landed cost. And now we're looking at the cost of just the barrel. So there is a, a, a lot of, I would say, manual craftsmanship that goes into the French cooperages and the French barrels that, that are created. So it does come with a little bit of a cost to it. But I'll be interested to be able to try this. Hopefully we'll get a chance to review it on a whiskey quickie for you and let you know if $895 is, is worth it to you. But I tell you what, Cave has been putting out a lot of great stuff in the Founders Collection. He had the Mizanar Oak one, and we got to try that. Fantastic release. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got another episode with Cave coming out here in a few weeks. So stay tuned for that one as well. And our last headline for the day, the drive, the run, the grass cutting, uh, the, the house cleaning. I don't know what you do with the podcast. I'd love to be able to know what you do. But let's go ahead and get to it. So Dixon Deadman. He has announced his highly anticipated next creation called 2XO Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. And 2XO stands for two times oak. 
And this uses a unique blending practice where Dixon rebarrels his hand selected aged whiskey into new charred oak barrels for intense wood notes and extraordinary rich and complex flavors. The 2XO brand will consist of a series of small batch blends and a series of single barrel releases. Each small batch blend will be different, bearing a distinctive name and a symbol inspired by Deadman's passion to innovate, collaborate, and create high quality liquids with unique characteristics and profiles. The first small batch blend in the 2XO series is called the Phoenix Blend and will be released in November this year in select markets and at limited quantities. The Phoenix Blend will be followed by two new small batch blend releases and single barrel releases in each consecutive year. Well, I guess the the handcuffs are off from Stoli and he can go and do what he wants. So now that he's kind of dropped this, we'll be interested to kind of see what happens here. If you think about what he's doing here, this is the same exact playbook that he did with Kentucky Owl and what made that so great. If you remember the original Kentucky Owl releases, these were double barreled. He took mature whiskey, double barreled it, and because that's what we all do. We love double barreling. We love toasted. We love whatever because it just imparts more flavor. And so he's just taking that same playbook and rolling this into his new company. Now, there is no indication of what type of whiskey he's using, where it's from, what age or anything like that, the type of char, who knows how transparent it'll be. It'll be interesting to kind of see, but we know that, you know, he's been working on some things behind the scenes for a while. So I'm glad to see this start coming to light. We'll be interested to kind of see exactly what happens here over the next few years. And actually probably the next few months as, as this starts rolling out in market, who knows, maybe he won't be the, uh, you know, Kentucky owl, uh, man that was known for doing that. He can be able to roll this in and kind of create the next big company and we'll see how the market reacts to it. I'll be interested to kind of see if, if it's going to have the same premium price tag or if it's going to be a little bit more accessible to, to most people or anything like that. I don't know. We'll see, but congratulations Dixon on your new venture. But with that, let's go ahead and wrap it up. That's going to be it for this week in bourbon. I appreciate you all sticking around I didn't really have any bad jokes this time. I just kind of gave you my thoughts on these, but you're in luck. Ryan will be back next week as we start preparing for our first ever, our biggest event that we've ever thrown, Pursuit Palooza. That'll be happening next week. And if you didn't get tickets, well, unfortunately, you have to wait till next year. We had 110 tickets that sold out. Or should I say 106 tickets that sold out in 15 minutes. So a whole weekend of hanging out and talking about booze and uh, bourbon and being able to actually supply bourbon for everybody too. So looking forward to be able to doing that. So look for Pursuit Palooza next year in our, our newsfeed or something like that. But with that, cheers, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>